Hey Furniture Flippers, I'm Amy and today I'm going to talk to you about a few tips and tricks of things that you should be doing if you're wanting to flip furniture. These are these come from a lot of the questions I get asked by people and just some different things that will help you to figure out how to price things and what things you should be trying to sell. So stay tuned, we're going to check that out. Real quick before we get started, if you want to check in the description box, I do have a free uh, furniture flip pricing worksheet that will help you kind of figure out how you should price your things and I have a video about that that I'll also link below. If you want to grab that, the link is in the description and that helps you kind of work out how much you want to charge for things or how much you can afford to pay for things uh, to see if you're going to make the profit that you're looking for. Okay, I'm going to give you five tips of things that you should be doing if you're wanting to flip furniture and then I'm going to give you a bonus tip at the end and stay till the end because actually this one, the bonus might be the most valuable to you. It's a little off the charts from the other stuff I'm giving, but I think that it actually could be one that could help you the most. So stay tuned and listen to all the tips that I've got for you and let's dive in. One of the questions I get a lot is, because I, I say and all furniture flippers say, you should get to know what's selling in your market and how much it's selling for, what things people want. And I, I get a lot of questions like, how am I supposed to know what's selling in my market or what people want? I'm gonna give you a few actual tips of what I do and things that, that you can be doing every day that will help you start to get a feel for that and start to know. Um, one of the first things that you should be doing is go into Facebook Marketplace and search for things that are like what you want to sell, what you are thinking about selling and that you want to find out how quickly they're selling, how much they're selling for. So I recommend that you kind of narrow down in the beginning to certain things you want to specialize in depending on how big your vehicle is, how easy it is for you to move things, how much time you have, how much space you have to work in. I, in one of my other videos, I kind of recommend that you start with a certain type of thing and get to know that well, and then you can expand from there. And one reason I say that is so that you can do some research and start to know what that type of item or style of item is selling for. You know, So maybe you're specializing in farmhouse, maybe you're specializing in mid-century modern, maybe you're specializing in dressers because they bring the most profit usually. Uh, maybe you're not able to flip dressers because you don't have a, a friend to help you move and so you need to specialize in smaller pieces but you need to find out which smaller pieces are gonna have the best uh, profit margin. So kind of start doing that and this is how you can do it by researching those particular types of things, narrowing a search on Facebook Marketplace. One of the first things you need to do is when it says delivery method or pickup method, click local pickup only. So that way you can immediately get rid of billions of things that say they will ship to you because that's not what we're competing with. That's We're looking for what's here in our market that other people can go pick up on Saturday if they wanna buy it. So first, you wanna get everything that's just being picked up locally. And then you wanna narrow into the types of things that you're selling, whatever kind of thing you're looking at doing. If you're a painter or if you're trying to do couch flipping, whatever kind of thing you wanna do, narrow down so you're finding those listings. And then the ones that are kinda of compatible with what you're trying to do, what you want to do is find there's a little bookmark icon and you want to click on that to save. That will save any of those listings that you're interested in coming back to and looking at later. And so if you do that with enough of the types of things that you're trying to track, this is how you can track them. This is how you can find out if they sold, how quickly they sold, what they sold for. And that's, that's what you want to do in the beginning. Start clicking on the things that you are interested in selling that you think you could sell and save several of them. <clears throat> then you're going to go back. As the days progress, as the weeks progress, you're gonna go into your account in Facebook Marketplace, and in there, there will be a place where you can click on saved items, and, and that will bring up all the things that you've saved or bookmarked, and you'll be able to look at whether they sold and what they sold for, with a caveat. What they sold for may not be exactly right. If the person marked it down, it will show what they originally listed, it will show a slash through and show what they marked it down to, and then show that it was sold. Now, we all know from doing these deals in person in real life and negotiating that sometimes a price gets negotiated lower at the point of sale and so it may have actually sold for lay lower without having been officially marked down on the on the app and so sometimes it might have sold for less than that but you'll definitely see if, if it sat there long enough that the person felt like they needed to mark it down and still list it that you'll be able to see that and so that'll give you a good idea of like kind of how quickly they had it 
how quickly they sold it or if they felt like they needed to mark it down to get rid of it. All those things are clues that you can use as you're starting to learn about this particular type of item that you're interested in. And so just start doing that. I, I recommend that you make a habit that every day you just kind of check in on these certain places online or on your phone app and, and see how things are progressing so that you can start to get a feel for what things are selling at. And, and bookmarking things, saving things in Facebook Marketplace is one of the best places to do it because it will save for you and show you if it's sold and when it's sold and how much it's sold for. Okay, tip number two. What you wanna do is search uh, the type of thing you're trying to sell. If you're, I'm a painter, so I think a lot of people who watch this channel may be people who do um, chalk painting or painted furniture or wanting to, to flip furniture that they're painting or fixing up a little bit. And so, for example, you can search things like painted wood furniture. And in, in the case of this tip, I think that Craigslist probably works a little better. You, you wanna be checking all the different apps where people are selling. I know a lot of people prefer Facebook Marketplace to Craigslist. They think it's a little more high-end than Craigslist, but it's always good for your purposes, for knowledge and information to be checking everywhere. So on Craigslist, what's easy about this is it'll just show you everything that was posted under that name at a certain time. and it's a little easier to find like other flippers who have just like posted a whole batch of stuff that they painted or sold. Uh, so you might search say mid-century modern wood furniture or painted wood furniture, something like that that kind of describes what type of thing you're, you're looking to do. And then if you see like quite a few listings from the same city that have a similar look all at once, that usually, you're usually then finding a seller who is flipping stuff, doing a little to it or whatever, doing a certain type of thing they specialize in and flipping it. And this is a, what this is good for is it's a source to find like a whole bunch of listings from one person and seeing what they are listing the price at. So that just gives you a ballpark for what someone who is buying stuff, fixing it up a little or cleaning it up or taking a better picture and then trying to resell it and what they're trying to sell it for. It gives you a starting point for kind of where somebody who's already doing this is pricing their stuff. All right, tip number three is make it a habit to kind of regularly visit your local either antique malls or consignment stores, whatever kind of thing you have around that is a place where people would be reselling furniture and stuff like this. And um, in my town, I do check that antique, the local antique malls frequently to see if something was there, did it turn over quickly, what are people listing prices for. And another thing that I have luckily very close to me is a really good consignment store. Um, and you can check there and see what things they have, what they're pricing them at, and how quickly they're gone. If you go kind of week upon week, if you say like every Saturday I'm just gonna walk through this store, or every Thursday, whatever, that way you'll have an idea of what's, what's going through quickly and what isn't. And at our, the consignment store I go to, after it's been there a while, they mark it down. So you can see on the tag immediately how long it's been there. It says already on the tag that it, you know if it's this date, it's this much, if it's this date or this date, it goes down. And so you can tell even in one visit what things they've been sitting on for a while versus what things are gone the next time you look. Um, and so it's good to check that and just get an idea of what things are selling for both at antique or craft malls or mercantiles as well as um, any kind of consignment store. The one thing you need to keep in mind is that they will be priced higher than what you can price on Facebook Marketplace, Craigslist, offer up those kinds of things. Because people do expect to pay less when they're buying directly from the person at their house. And that's because there is a markup for retail because there are tons of expenses that have to be paid by someone who's running a retail location. And so those things are gonna cost more. But the, the payoff is that arguably you're getting a lot of traffic in seeing your stuff at a consignment store or an antique mall. Now the truth is, that model was created before we had apps like Facebook Marketplace, and now you can get so many eyes on your furniture and your product without going to one of those places. That's based on what used to be the retail model, and those things have changed a lot because of technology. So you really can get hundreds or thousands of eyes on your, on your furniture without going to one of those places, but the price structure is still pretty similar people still kind of expect that they're going to pay less if they are getting it from you you're selling it directly to them because you're not going through a middleman and everybody still does understand from years and centuries of merchants and how retail pricing works that there is a markup when things are sold by a middleman and so if something's being sold directly by you people are going to expect to pay a little bit less so just keep that in mind but this gives you an idea of what 
what their options are. Any customer who's looking for a couch like you're gonna sell or a dresser, it gives you an idea of what their options are gonna be and what they would need to pay to get that thing. Okay, along those lines, tip number four is look at, go ahead and look at retail prices for things at the, at the cool uh, retailers, you know, the kinds of stores that are selling the, the nicest version of what you are creating, whether it's farmhouse painted style or whether it's, you know, something real rustic and primitive looking or whether it's mid-century modern or whether it's a very sleek, modern, cool vibe. Whatever, whatever places people could look to buy those things new, look there and see what range those things are selling for because you need to take that into consideration too. If you have a dresser or a, you know, a table and chair set or whatever it is that's in really great condition and it would cost them you know, this much to get it new, but they can get it from you for half that price, that is usually considered a pretty reasonable um, trade-off. So it's not, I'm not saying that you can charge what they're gonna sell at CB2 or someplace like that. I'm not saying you can charge retail prices, but you might be able to charge half of retail. And that's actually still probably pretty good. So have an idea of what it would cost them to get something new and then think about what their expectations are going to be to get something that's used. But if it's still in really great condition, then you can charge a decent amount of what they would be charging to get it new because what you're looking at is what their options are, right? They need a table and chair set. Right now, these are their options, and they're gonna choose from those options, so you need to know what all their options are on their plate and then see where you fit into that scheme. Tip number five is make it a habit to walk through model homes in your area, in the neighborhoods where you're hoping to sell, in the nicer neighborhoods that have um, cool, stylish model homes, because uh, what this will help you with is, is getting a feel for what people are looking for, what sells in your area, and what kind of just, what are the trends in styles of furniture in your area. And um, usually the decorators for the model homes have a pretty good feel for what's like up and coming in style, but what's still gonna be comfortable to the market they're selling to right there. They're not gonna go so far into the future of something so avant-garde that nobody in their neighborhood is gonna think that's cool. They're going to be like kind of in the middle and it's good for you to know what those trends are that are coming up. It also can be really fun just to see the things that are up and coming and to see the ways they have put things together, what kind of furniture they're showing that's going to be in style. And um, it just can be educational to you. If you're in the business of selling furniture, you're probably interested in it. First of all, it's probably fun to go look at model homes, but also it's helpful to you to know what's gonna sell and to get ideas for that. I'm lucky because my consignment store in my area, they also have a deal with all of the builders locally, all the higher end builders, and they take their things that came out of model homes that they're no longer using when they, once they sell them and they, they sell those items in the consignment store. So I can also see a lot of the things that have been in the builders' model homes at the same time. But this is a helpful way to just get a feel for what kinds of things are going to be sought after and what things are gonna be considered kind of up and coming and trendy in the neighborhoods that you're wanting to sell it. Okay, my bonus tip number six is if you are wanting to flip things, particularly if you're a person who wants to just like take it and resell it immediately without even doing anything to it, then look for horrible pictures of things. While you are doing your daily search, and I recommend, you know, every day just kind of spend 15 minutes or so on Facebook Marketplace, Craigslist, any other sites or apps that you're interested in so that you can see what's out there. Not only what people are selling for, but obviously shopping for things for yourself that you wanna flip. And so one of my secrets that I think you need to keep an eye out for is look for terrible photos. Some people just put no effort in, they wanna get rid of it, it's stuck in the garage, it's in a messy room, they don't even care. I'm gonna show you, I took some pictures while I was looking for things for this for this uh, video, I just found some pictures that were so awful that I just had to screenshot them to show you. And that's why this is your bonus tip because you may see something where it's like, the, the item itself is not bad, but the picture is so awful that I don't know that anybody would ever even click on it and look at the picture. And if you see something like that, you really might just be able to, to talk them down because a lot of times it'll sit there for a while with no one buying it. So definitely don't offer full price. See if you can get that for a bargain bring it back to your space, take a good picture, list it at a price that's fair, and you could make a quick turnover of some bucks right there just from taking a better picture and staging it. And so 
Um, that's a great place to find some value if you want a quick turnover of something. So look for terrible pictures. I'm just showing you some in this just kind of for entertainment value, but <laughs> you, you never know. They're out there. A lot of people don't want to mess with it. They don't want to move it from the messy place where it is. And they just want to get rid of it. And so they take a picture right where it is and it's definitely less appealing to people. So you might be able to give it more value just by taking a better picture and making people think that it's like not in a gross place and it's in a clean place. <laughs> so keep that in mind. All right, guys, I hope these tips were helpful for you. If you have other tips, especially about like ways that you use the, the apps and the websites to kind of find things and track things, I would love for you to um, put them in the description below so that we can all kind of help each other. I'm not a tech genius or guru. And so any of you guys who have tricks and things that you do, I'd love for you to share so that we can all have a conversation about it. All right, bye till next time. Take care.